डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड माई टीचर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार आई वेलकम यू टू द प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर ऑन डेफिकेशन रिफ्लेक्स नाउ द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन कम्स इन अवर माइंड वॉट इज डेफिकेशन वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ डेफिकेशन नाउ द डेफिकेशन द सिंपल मीनिंग ऑफ डेफिकेशन इज द डिस्चार्ज ऑफ फीकस फ्रॉम द बॉडी डिस्चार्ज ऑफ फीकस from the body that is known as defecation now in general term for our general understanding we can say that the answering the nature's call by using the toilet that is the defecation this is the non biological definition of defecation now the entire mechanism of discharges discharging the fecus so this entire mechanism of discharge of fecus is known as the defecation reflex now before we discuss the defecation reflex we need to understand this mass movement first i am showing you this figure you observe this third figure and this third figure with the blue color arrow is showing the mass movement now what is mass movement see when the food comes in the stomach what happens the due to the stimulation of food the wall of large intestine that is the descending colon and the transverse colon in which the fecus is present so these walls of large intestine they perform the peristaltic movement the muscle which are present in the wall of large intestine they experience they perform the peristaltic movement that is the contraction and relaxation relaxation now due to the peristaltic movement what happens this fecus is pressurized so the peristaltic movement of large intestine is pressurizing this fecus and due to the pressure what happens as you can see the fecus one minute the fecus the fecus from the sigmoid colon it is entering into the rectum so this is about the mass movement okay and the information regarding the mass movement you can read this information regarding the mass movement so in short due to the mass movement the fecus enters into the rectum now what happens okay so now <clears throat> this is the this is the first point and whatever we have discussed regarding the mass movement uh, that thing is written over here that the fecus material it is push from sigmoid colon into the rectum so the rectum receives the fecus this is the first point now what happens second point now as the as the fecus has entered into the rectum the wall of rectum is distended that means distended means due to the fecus due to the presence of fecus the wall of rectum is pressurized and this pressurized rectal wall is stimulating the stretch receptor which are present in the rectal wall and now there is a initi initiation of the defecation reflex so now the defecation reflex is initiated as the stretch receptor are stimulated due to the presence of fecus and when it is going to end this defecation reflex so when the rectum is empty when the fecus is discharged outside from the body so that time the defecation reflex 
will end okay so this is the this is the second point now moving on the third point now what is the defecation reflex which are the events that are taking place in the defecation reflex so in response to the distension of the rectal wall the stretch receptor they send the sensory nerve impulse to the sacral spinal cord now the spinal cord which is present the portion of the spinal cord which is present at the sacrum that is the sacral spinal cord so here now with the all this uh, theory uh, we try to understand with the figure so now you can see uh, in the rectum the fecus is there okay and this fecus is pressurizing the rectal wall and what is happening if you observe closely you will find the stretch receptors are present in the wall of the rectum now due to the distension or due to the pressure of fecus this stretch receptor they are stimulated and this stretch receptor they as you can see with the green arrow this green arrows so the sensory nerve impulse is going is entering into the sacral spinal cord so this one over here this is the sacral spinal cord okay so in short the presence of fecus okay that information passed to the <clears throat> stretch receptor and stretch receptor are now passing the information that the fecus is in the rectum so this information uh, with the help of a uh, sensory fiber reaches to the sacral spinal cord so this is the third point now moving on the fourth point now motor impulse from the spinal cord they travel along the parasympathetic nerve and this nerve impulse from the parasympathetic nerve where it is reaching so this nerve impulse reaches to descending colon sigmoid colon rectum and anus now what is the meaning of this thing see here <coughs> the sensory nerve impulse reach over here okay so at this point at this point the information <coughs> is analyzed which information that the fecus is there in the rectum that information is analyzed over here so now from the spinal cord there arise a motor nerve and this motor nerve which is coming out from the spinal cord this motor nerve is known as parasympathetic motor nerve or the motor fiber and where this nerve is reaching so it reaches to the as you can see the parasympathetic nerve reaches to the rectal wall then this one is the anus so the wall of anus then sigmoid colon the branch is not shown so i am drawing okay so four names descending colon okay let me draw here this is the sigmoid colon and this is the this one is the descending colon so the branch okay the branch of parasympathetic nerve reaches to the descending colon sigmoid colon then the branch reaches to the wall of the rectum and the branch reaches to the anus 
okay now what the role this parasympathetic motor now is playing what is the function of this parasympathetic parasympathetic now now as i told you earlier that the information regarding the presence of fecus is analyzed over here so this now is sending the message to all four parts descending colon sigmoid colon rectum and anus so due to the nerve impulse from parasympathetic nerve all this region all this four region the muscle the longitudinal muscle of the rectum they contract okay so with the red color you see this nerve impulse is coming and where this nerve impulse is entering so the nerve impulse enter into the wall of the rectum so the wall of the rectum is contracted since the wall of rectum is contracted the pecus is pressurized okay now along with this pressure due to the parasympathetic nerve on rectum one more factor is there and the other factor is voluntary contraction voluntary contraction of diaphragm and abdominal muscle now what is the <coughs> voluntary contraction of the diaphragm and abdominal muscle okay what the role is this contraction is playing see voluntary voluntary means our brain our brain decide that we want to defecate so the nerve impulse from our brain with the help of nerve where the nerve impulse passes nerve impulse passes diaphragm and abdominal muscle so we are voluntarily we are contracting the diaphragm and abdominal muscle at the time of defecation so there are stimulus from the parasympathetic motor fiber which is contracting which is contracting the rectum as well as there is the voluntary nerve impulse to the diaphragm and abdominal muscle and and we are pressurizing we are pressurizing uh, we are contracting the diaphragm and abdominal muscle at the time of defecation that is the meaning of this thing okay and due to all these factors parasympathetic stimulation plus voluntary contraction due to all this factor what happens the internal anal sphincter opens up so here in the figure you can see here the internal anal this one is the internal anal sphincter and this internal anal sphincter is now opening up okay so this is the this one is the fourth point now moving on the fifth point now the external anal sphincter is under voluntary control so closing or opening see this one this is the external anal sphincter here this this is this is the external anal sphincter and contraction and relaxation of this sphincter is under the voluntary control so if we want we can contract this and if we want we can relax this external anal sphincter now if we are voluntarily relaxing the external anal sphincter and we know that the internal anal sphincter has relaxed so both the sphincters are relaxed and now we can defecate that means now we can discharge the fecus from the anus to the outside of the body okay and 
one more thing if it is if it is voluntarily constricted defecation can be postponed now what is the meaning of this line what is the meaning of this line if it is voluntarily constricted defecation can be postponed see the now we need to understand this thing the contraction and relaxation relaxation of this external anal sphincter is uh, we are voluntarily by our will we are controlling this sphincter opening and closing now suppose what happens we are traveling in the bus and the bus is moving and driver is running the bus okay and we are requesting to the driver that we want to defecate but uh, driver says uh, uh, we cannot uh, stop the bus on the road okay so the bus is moving and we are having the urge to defecate now in this situation uh, let's say for one one or two hour what happened we are voluntarily we are voluntarily we are constricting the external anal sphincter okay so we are stopping the process of defecation voluntarily that is the meaning of this thing now sixth point then at the time of defecation see one automatic this 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 response okay this this reflex this reflex from a stress receptor this sensory fiber then uh, to this spinal cord then this parasympathetic motor fiber so this uh, reflex or this movement of nerve impulse is automatic there is no role we are playing there is automatically it is happening but as far as the voluntary contraction is concerned what is happening see diaphragm and abdominal muscle add defecation by increasing the pressure within the abdomen so when we are defecating what we are doing by <coughs> by our will we are pressurizing our diaphragm and the abdominal muscle and what this diaphragm and abdominal muscles are doing when they are contracted so they are pushing they are pressurizing the wall of sigmoid colon and rectum so the pecus which is present inside the sigmoid colon and the rectum the pecus is also pressurized this is the voluntary contraction okay the role of voluntary contraction now moving on the seventh point now once again this point if defecation does not occur the fecus back up into the sigmoid colon until the next wave of mass peristalsis stimulus what is the meaning of this point if defecation does not occur see i have given you the example that we uh, a person anyone who is traveling in the bus and he is having urge to defecate but the driver is not stopping the bus now in that situation what will happen the pecus will again enter into the sigmoid colon from the rectum so from the rectum again the fecus is going back into the sigmoid colon and then when the bus stop after let's say half an hour or one hour that time what will happen again new <coughs> fresh mass peristalsis movement will take place and this mass peristaltic movement will stimulate the stretch receptor once again and this will create the new defecation reflex okay so
so when the bus stop again we will visit after the we will visit the we first we will find the toilet and then we are going to defecate in the toilet okay that is the meaning of this seventh point now the eighth point now in in puns uh, newborn let's say the newborn baby or the babies uh, who are having the age they are uh, less than one year of age they are having the small babies okay now we have seen that in the babies what is happening uh, they are uh, many a times many a times always always they are spoiling their clothes with their putties or their pickers because in the infants what is happening this defecation reflex is automatic and it is automatically emptying the rectum because in the infants the voluntary control that as an adult that control we are having to constrict or relax the external anal sphincter but in the infant this voluntary control has not developed okay so by their will they cannot uh, contract or relax the external anal sphincter so that's why in the small babies the infants uh, they used to spoil the clothes with their potties or the fecus okay so this is the eighth point and finally the last point ninth point now the in this point the bow they are mentioning about the amount of bowel movement first of all bowel what is bowel bowel there is a small bowel and there is a large bowel small bowel small bowel is the part of small intestine large bowel is a part of large intestine that is the uh, colon colon and the the descending colon the sigmoid colon these are the part of the large bowel now how many time a person <coughs> experience this bowel movement okay so basically uh, how many times the person is defecating in a day so this thing the defecation it depends on various factor the bowel movement of the large intestine this depend uh, this depend on various factors such as uh, the person's diet what the person is eating which kind of food he takes then the lifestyle he is having or uh, or the mental health of the person the person is under stress or what so all this factor this <coughs> decide that how many times the person is going to defecate now the normal range for the bowel activity the movement of large intestine uh, it varies from two to three bowel movements per day to the three to four bowel movement per week so this is the normal <coughs> range that a person defecates Two to three times in a day to four to uh, three to four <coughs> times per week now before i wind up this presentation lecture i would like to show you all the figures this figure this figure is very important figure for you then this is also a good one see point wise they have written all the information this is the second point third point so with this we have completed 
the discussion on defecation or the defecation reflex i hope you have enjoyed this presentation lecture and i also hope that this presentation lecture will be helpful in your exam preparation and also in your studies my name is manish kochi sir i am from amdavad india bye bye namaste